Hello everyone, I'm Trusted44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we finished the first scenario, the Valley of Dying Things. What a cheerful scenario that was. And now, with our party freshly leveled up and stronger, it's time to enter the next scenario that is available to us. The next of the four scenarios present to us in this particular uh, game. One of the four that is given to us when you get the game. A small rebellion. You've been hired to wipe out a rebellion. Will you follow your orders or switch sides? This will be interesting. Let's try it out and find out. Times are tough for adventurers in Valorum. There's little work to be had. It is supposedly the wildest and most unsettled of the Empire's continents. And yet the monsters have been subdued and their treasure has been claimed. Things are, for now, peaceful. There isn't much for you to do. That's why, when you were contacted by an Empire agent and told of a job for you in a place called Morrow's Isle, you jumped at the chance. Sure, the agent was rather vague about the nature of the problem. There are supposedly brigands there, or bandits, or some other sort of evil humans determined to cause trouble and mayhem. Your job will be to track down and slay them, standard Empire treatment for thieves. At any rate, it's paying work, so you decide to go. Considering your lack of other options, you might as well see what's going on. Lord Volp, leader of Moro's Isle, is offering a hefty reward for success. Two weeks travel over land and several hours on a boat later, you have been deposited on a dock in Salanthi, in Salathni, the largest city on Moro's Isle. You take a good look around Salathni, a small but established port city with stone buildings and well-fed merchants. One look tells you that there is definitely work for your kind here. The people are scared. Even the portly and the old are armed, and the few souls out in the streets constantly cast worried looks out at the hills. There are definitely problems to be solved here, likely for pay. You have a letter of introduction in your pocket. You're supposed to go see a man named Vonnegut in the Sea Worm Inn near the dock. He will explain more of what's going on and give you your official orders. After months of scraping out a living, you start to get excited. At last, you can clean your weapon, go out, have adventures, and fight evil. All right, then. Here we are. All prepped and ready. You step off of the dock and into the small port town of Salathni. The buildings and streets are clean and well taken care of. The people look comfortable, well fed, and nervous. You get a lot of anxious stares. At the east end of the docks, you see a large inn with a long green sea serpent painted along its wall. That's there where that's where you're supposed to meet Vonnegut and find out what's going on. All right, let's just look around a little bit here. See what we can see. We are here. The Salathni Harbor has a high stone wall built around it, sheltering it from rough waves and storms. You're on a narrow path running along this section of the wall. And that just looks out over things. Okay. Let me guess, that's. Yeah, that's an empty storage shed. Dock storage bins. Thieves will be killed. Yeah, I figured. Nothing over there. You notice that one of the guards has been tracking you. He subtly walks close to you, inspects you, and turns to walk away. The soldiers of Mara's Isle must be instructed to keep a very close eye on people, especially strangers. I'm gonna need to level up my lockpicking, I imagine. A couple short swords, spears. I mean, I did pretty well before, I didn't need to level up my lockpicking that high. Once I got to 15, which was relatively easy, things were good. Nobody sees anything. Hey, a level up! Right at the beginning. And fine lockpicks and a piercing crystal. Yay! Right, well, here's the inn we're supposed to investigate. Sea Worm Inn find a boat at the end of the dock, waiting to take passengers away from Mara's Isle. No, I don't want to leave now. Alright. Alright, let's, let's go right in. See, we're in. That must be him. When you get close to this small man, he nervously motions you over to join him. As you sit, he takes a quick look around the room, paying close attention to the windows and doors. When he thinks it's safe, he turns to you. He asks for your letters of introduction and looks them over carefully. Satisfied, he says, I'm Vonnegut. Welcome to Morrow's Isle. 
He continues to keep an eye on the windows and doors. These are troubled times. I hope you can help. You've been sent to help me deal with the hill runners. If nothing is done, I fear Morrow's Isle will slide into rebellion. Why are you nervous? Forget my caution, but the hill runners have made all our lives dangerous. Could your enemy strike at you here? If you knew more of the hill runners' techniques, you would understand. Aiding the Empire will before long result in a visit from them. A deadly visit. You should be twice as careful as I. Vonnegut continues to watch the doors and windows. His continuous worry can't be good for him. Anything else I can tell you about our little private rebellion? Who are the hill runners? They are the rebels, the violent raiders and murderers who have turned this isle into a place of constant terror. They are the reason you have been brought here. How am I supposed to help? The hill runners, led by their leader Stalker, have had great success in fighting the Empire on Morrow's Isle. You've been brought here to infiltrate them. I'm not here to tell you how. I'm only here to tell you of your contact, Jayan, and to provide information. Why didn't you just ask the Empire to send an army? We could crush Stalker and his minions easily enough, but we do not want to call a whole army here to deal with such a rabble. It would be expensive, and it would damage this island's resources extensively. The Empire wants this issue handled quietly. What is known about Stalker? Practically nothing's known of him. Or her. Stalker is completely ruthless and vicious, and a shrewd tactician as well. If you can infiltrate the hill runners, we might be able to find and eliminate this threat. Fortunately for us all, Stalker is an opposite. Our leader, Jayan. What's Jayan like? Jayan was sent here by the Empire to destroy Stalker. He's just as secretive and just as shrewd and vicious. It is he who will be giving you your orders. I'm here to tell you how to contact him. How will I contact Jayan? You are to go to Willow, east of here. Somewhere in Willow is a secret stairway down which leads to where our leader Jayan will speak with you and give you your orders. He will tell you how to infiltrate the hill runners and why. Oh, before you go, a serious warning. What is your warning? Like all adventurers on the Isle, we are sure to, you will be contacted by the hill runners so that you can help them with their sinister deeds. Do nothing to help them, nothing at all, until you have been to the contact point to clear things with Jayan. If you help Stalker without permission, you will be slain. Where is Willow? Willow isn't far to the east. I'm not sure where the contact point is in the town. I've never been down there. But then your adventurers, used to poking your noses into places you aren't supposed to be, I'm sure you'll find it. All I know is that it is underground. And what information can you provide? He points to a door in the southeast corner of the room. In that room, there are two books. Fortunately, the innkeeper here has a keen interest in the history of our island. Read them, and you will learn much of Morrow's Isle and our situation. And here we've got a map of Morrow's Isle. That's something we need. Oh, we lost those items we had in the previous scenario. Okay, so... There's Salanthi. That's where we need... That's where we're starting. Willow's down there. That's where we need to go. Town of Liam over here. Fall up here. Buzzard up here. Muck up there. Looks like a swamp town. And Zaskiva up in the northwest over here. Again, I apologize for the interruption. Freaking phones. Ugh. Anyway. So, the island is actually fairly square. Let's see, there's... Like a mountain of sorts over here. It looks like there may be a mine right to the north there. Uh, I see a tiny bit of road there. There may be a village there. Might be an inn over here. Farms probably around Willow. That would make sense. Looks like there's more swamp to the east of Liam. And this must be a mountainous area. I would imagine that... that that's probably where the hill people they were talking about are. Probably based out of Buzzard. Oh, I wonder what Zaskiva is over there. Alright. That just opens the door. Even for inns frequented by sailors, the Sea Worm Inn is a bit on the seedy side. The barmaid is doing her best to fight the decay, but it's been a losing struggle for some time. The ancient stains on the bar are dirtied by newer, fresher stains. When she sees you, she grabs some mugs, expecting some heavy drink orders. I'm Clevens. Welcome to the Sea Worm Inn. What services do you offer? Well, our beer is great. Only five coins a mug. We have a room free for only six coins. If you're planning to travel, we have some hearty rations. Sure, we could actually probably do with some more food. I don't think we actually have any. 
Freaky interruptions today have been absolutely relentless. I apologize if I sound a little annoyed right now. Anyway, uh, which of these weighs the least? I mean, dried meat weighs the least, but it's the most expensive. It's not by much. Uh, let's just take fish. Sure, take all of it. It's no big deal. Uh, don't need anything else there. But, let's talk again. Tell me about events on this. Kilvins, Clivens holds a mug in her hand, optimistically hoping that you will place a drink order. Tell me about events on this island. Mara's Isle has some problems. Things have been dangerous lately. She points to a door to the southeast. I also keep some books around. I'd like people to learn about the history of my island. You should read them. I'd like you to tell me what you think. What areas are dangerous? The northwest corner is full of jumpy Empire soldiers. The northeast is full of hill runners. I suggest staying close to home until you know what you're doing. Jumpy Empire soldiers. Oh, there's someone else. With a tanned skin, earring, and tattoos, you have little doubt that this man is a sailor. He's currently working on what must be one of many beers. He grunts and belches. I'm Belk. Sit down and join me. He waves unsteadily at a nearby stool. You have a job in town? He barks out a laugh, spraying a bit of spittle in addition. Ha! <laughs> I'm a sailor! Or I'm retired, I'm not sure. Stop spitting on me, please. Bell casts a nervous glance at your weapon. Oops. Uh, sorry. How's the sailor trade? Making goods and runs to Morrow's Isle was a bit of work. Was a good bit of work. Safe, lots to do. They pay well. I was all set to retire, but then the trouble started. What sort of troubles? I get here, and within one day, one of these hill runners comes up to me. You see the barkeep look over, uncomfortable at the mention of the hill runners. They try to convert me. What'd the hill runners say to try to con and convince you? They say, help us, or we cut you down in your sleep. Then a soldier comes up to me next day and says he has his eye on me because I was seen talking to a hill runner. This place is madness. I'm getting out. Where do you wish to escape to? I'm going somewhere where people aren't getting killed everywhere and you can keep to yourself. Pretty reasonable, eh? It's hard to disagree. Would you like to retire? Yeah! He blows his nose on his sleeve. Years of work and I'm finally ready to settle down. Buy a farm, drink. Then I get here and there's all these troubles going on. Belk takes another long drink of ale. Soon after, displaying flawless aim, he spits a glove of something brown into the pot on the floor near him. Oh, look at that! Is the ale good here? No. It's better at Purdy's in, but it costs more, too. Alright. There's where we'd be sleeping. This hotel room has a reading. This hotel room has a reading room set here for the benefit of its more literate ver merchant visitors. There are two large books on pedestals. Each has a chair set up in front of it so that you can read in comfort. Excellent. This book is titled History of Morrow's Isle. A summary: Morrow's Isle was first settled by humans about 200 years before. Valorum was a wild and unsettled continent, and the settlers had a very hard time of it. Eventually, a tormented band of them made it to this isle. When they found rich grasslands, ore-filled hills, and a minimal number of hostile creatures, they knew they had reached their final destination. Once the few Nephilim living there were butchered, they were home at last. The settlers lived independently there for a hundred years until the Empire finally noticed the isle. Seeing the need for order, the Empire established a feudal state there. Despite a few minor difficulties which were easily dealt with, the transition of the island's population from independent settlers to serfs went smoothly, and with hard work the wealth of the island was harvested. Today, with many rich fields, productive mines, and happy citizens, Morrow's Isle is a virtual paradise to live and work in, thanks to the malevolent rule of the Empire and the hard work of the settlers. Now what's gone wrong? The leather-bound tome is titled A Report on Unrest in Morrow's Isle, a brief sensory of the uncensored parts. There has been some unrest on Morrow's Isle for the past century, ever since the settlers were brought under the control of the feudal lord. Until recently, the minor rebellions were easily dealt with. Now, however, there is a new vicious force on the Isle. Known as the Hill Runners and led by a person known only as Stalker, the rebels have had a good deal of success against the government. They have completely seized control of the northeastern mountains of Morrow's Isle, and, playing on and building up a small amount of mild discontent in the citizenry, they have done a good deal of harm to the Empire's control in this area. Part of their success can be attributed to their vicious tactics. 
Nobody, neither soldiers nor civilians, men nor women, is exempted from the Hill Runner's violence. Aiding an Empire soldier invites murder as surely as being one. Something should be done about this menace as quickly as possible. Otherwise, it is possible that malcontents in other areas will feel these tactics can succeed and adopt them. Well, everything so far is basically saying, yeah, we need to stop them. But let's wait and see just what is going on with them. I'm curious what their complaints are. I like the little bay here. The uh, little bay here. Whatever it is. Hadrix Fine Weaponry. Alright then. Weaponsmiths are always greatly in demand, especially on an island as tormented and violence racked as this one. Although business must be good, the smith looks very grim. He extends a massive hand to you. I'm Hadrick. How's business? Too good. We have all sorts of weapons for sale. You'll need them. Why do you say you'll need them? Well, there's no safety with those hill runners about. What do you know about the hill runners? He shakes his head. I'm not much on politics. I don't know who's doing what, or why. I just know what happened to Charles. What happened? His voice is grim. He's my boy. He was in a caravan trip going northwest to Zaskiva. Hill runners ambushed it. Killed everyone. Not just guards, everyone. Seems they were delivering weapons to the Empire garrison. My boy was just going up to start an apprenticeship. He was innocent. Sorry. He shakes his head. I don't have any crying left in me, or yelling. I just know that what's going on, it ain't right. I just have to keep going. Want some weapons? Hadrick waits to see what work you might have for him. It looks suspicious, though. Strangers are treated with great suspicion here. Well, let's see what you got. Yeah, it's basically weapons. Ooh, crew halberd. A uh, bronze halberd, I mean. Little better than the crude pike. But I think we'll save our money. You don't need it. We're pretty powerful as is. Silanthi Silanthi Fletcher. Sounds fair enough. This shop is where we can come to get all manner of missile weapons. The woman behind the counter looks up at you nervously. She's willing to trade with you, but she would rather you weren't here. I'm known as Blue. Long story, don't ask. Welcome to my archery shop. What items do you sell? We have missiles, bows, and bolts. Nothing else. I'm a simple merchant. I'm going to shop. Not really. Nothing we need to buy. I mean, we could start buying our iron arrows because they are better than crude arrows, but nah. What can you tell me of what's been happening on this island? She frowns, her suspicions confirmed. I have no ideas about anything. Neither does my family, I'm just a simple merchant. I don't want anything to do with any of that. Please leave. Return when you want to trade. Okay. Keepers of knowledge. This must be the training hall. When you walk up to the counter, the woman behind it looks up at you. For a brief instant, you see the intense fatigue clouding her eyes. Then she jumps up, spry and alert, to bow to you. I am Eleanor! I am the sage for the city of Selathne. It is odd that she claims to be a sage. Much of the room seems dedicated to teaching how to fight. You're a sage? I... well, yes, I know some things. Probably nothing that would be of value to you. I help captains chart courses and such. You notice a distinct lack of maps in here. You must realize by now that I am not. I teach military arts to those who need them to defend themselves against tyranny. Can you identify my items? Oh, well, I don't do that sort of thing. I think Iggers can do that. He's next door. Not me, though. You help sea captains. Well, sometimes. Not often. I can. You seem to be well equipped to teach self-defense. Oh, well, of course. Sometimes the poor villagers here need to be taught to defend themselves. From humanoids and the like. That's all. Okay. And Selathne Armorsmith. This must be who she was just talking about. Although this man is a blacksmith currently working on a breastplate, he looks surprisingly calm and clean. You soon see why. He mutters a spell and his hammer starts to glow. After a few more strikes, he sets it down to turn to talk to you. I'm Igus. Welcome to my shop. What sort of shop is this? Oh, I'm very versed. Most of the reason for my success. I can identify your items and then you can sell them to me. Or if you wish, I can provide you with all manner of fine armor. Can you identify my things? I have little doubt that I can identify anything, anything you have. My price? A mere 12 coins each. Since he has magical abilities, you have little doubt he can do me claims. 
Has your business been a success? He smiles and gets a faraway look in his eyes. Ah, yes. When Lord Volpe told me of the opportunities here, I was skeptical in the extreme. But then he told me how much wealth I could obtain by following him here. Well, how could I resist? Rest assured, Volpe is a great man. Tell me more about Lord Volpe. Empire made a wise decision the day they made him Lord of Mora's Isle. He rules from Zaskiva to the northwest, and every day he makes this isle a more profitable enterprise. As you watch, Igers continues his work. His combination of magical and smithing skill is enabling him to produce quality work, far beyond what you would expect on a small island like this. I'd like to see your wares. All sorts of armor. Bronze bracers would actually be handy now. As would the iron helmet, but I don't think we need to buy anything. Where'd you learn to... Magic. Where did anyone? In a school. I hope you didn't think everyone who learns magic is running around in harm's way like you do. Some of us settle down and focus our powers on aiding the Empire in direct mundane ways. And if I can make a little profit, so much better. Fair enough. Salathne Shopping District. Okay, that's just the outside. Just look around the outside so I see the barriers and distant areas. Looks like there's something in there. Interesting. Oh, is that the other end that was mentioned? Probably. Ah, there's someone. This wealthy and clean young man is probably the son of one of the town's successful merchants. He's in his late teens and he moves with the calm and confidence of the upper class. He nods in greeting, looking at your arms and armor with interest. I am Michael. Are you busy? Oh no, but I am pacing about our fine city. Is it not lovely? Yes, Salathne is lovely. You look around at Salathne. It is indeed a beautiful city. Michael fingers the silk collar of his shirt. I do not. I simply cannot understand why some malcontents would want to spoil it. I suppose you're right. But it's all right. Jane will sort them out. Who is Jane? He looks embarrassed, as if he's been caught talking about something he shouldn't. Um, sorry, forget I said anything about Jane. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Michael continues to inspect you with interest. People who work for a living must fascinate him. Have you not seen an adventurer before? Not for a while. I thought I might become one once, when I was young and foolish. I am glad you are here. We need someone to sort out these foolish islanders, who dare to think they can shed the just rule of the, of the Empire. Is it possible that the villagers have a just complaint? Huh, <laughs> a just reason to fight the Empire? You must be joking. Yes, you must be joking. Well, it is always possible. Oh, that must be the temple. Right, so these must be... private homes. Nothing in there. Ooh, energy elixir. Let's take that. Steel arrows! Ooh. You know what, Draco? You take the steel arrows and use them instead of the crew. Lock. Nothing in there. A couple chests here. Some more silver coins. My god, I swear these phone calls will not end today. <sighs> Alright, moving on. Uh, nothing of note in that house. I mean, we're getting a lot of experience from picking these locks. Bottle of wine, iron buckler, apple pie. Yes. I love apple pie. It is delicious. Bonnie, you will hold on to that apple pie and hopefully only use it if we need it in an extreme situation. Wow, this is a fancy little house. What have we got in here? Oh, we got some more lockpicks, so that's handy. And piers. Whoever lives in there, they're well off. Hey, you level up. Draco leveled up. Nice. Anything in here? Shirt and cloak. And in here, what have we got? Got nothing in the dresser and a papyrus sheet in there. Alright. 
Let's take a look in, uh, this has to be the temple. Shrine of Blessed Healing. Donations accepted. Well, I was right. Huh, there's nobody in here. The shrine is dominated by a large, gleaming altar. Even being near it fills you with a warm, comforting feeling. There are kneeling pads set in front of it. No doubt so that you can pray in peace. Pray. Kneeling in front of the altar does indeed give you a warm, pleasant feeling. And that's all. The shrine's donation box is here. It's empty right now. A small sign hung on the front of the box says, Suggested life-affirming donation, 100 gold. Now yeah, what the hell, deposit 100 gold. You put the money in the box. As you watch, it slowly disappears. Very odd. You don't feel any different. Oh! That actually left... Oh, I get it. It said it left me feeling invigorated. But then I went again. You deposit a hundred coins, pray at the altar, and get fully healed and regenerated. I get it. That makes sense. Alright. Still a couple buildings here. Selafni Barracks. Okay. Simple enough. Ah, there's someone here. You meet one of the guards of Selafni. He's a loyal Empire soldier, ready to defend the town against attackers. He constantly looks towards the hills surrounding Selafni, watching for raiders. He's too, too busy to talk to you. This is the captain of the guard for Selafni. He was looking over charts and maps when you entered the room, and he doesn't seem pleased that you're interrupting his work. I'm Commander Barnard. How can I help you? Commander Barnard wants to continue his planning, and you are interrupting him. He will speak with you, but he wants to be left alone. May I speak with you? If necessary, I'm the commander for this garrison. I suppose I can discuss issues with you. Let's discuss the issues, then. Well, you are far from the first adventurers to visit Morrow's Isle, and you will probably, like the others, be contacted by the Hillrunners. Will the Hillrunners try to recruit us? Yes, to the rebel cause. He doesn't seem to know why you were brought here. You decide not to tell him. They will contact you and try to get you to help them. When they do, a small warning. What warning would that be? He gives an evil grin. We'll find all of the rebels one of these days. When we do, it'll take days for you, sorry, for them to die. Before they lure you to their side, remember that. They'll pay. Now excuse me, I have defenses to plan. Uh, how fair is your garrison? The workings of this garrison are not your business. Are you trying to hire any adventurers? What? You aren't busy enough. Focus on your main mission. That will be enough work for you, I think. All right, all right. Let me just take these few coins that I have that I see in here. Because why not? And there's one more building here. These are the stables. Okay, fair enough. Aw, I can't mount the horses. Prudy, Purdy's Resort. Fine dining and victuals. Vacancy. Hmm. There are two mercenaries at this table. One is here looking for work helping the Empire fight the rebels. The other travels on merchant ships. You are arguing about what is the best thing to do to get rid of the rebels. You very quickly find that they do not want to share their conversation with anyone, let alone adventurers. They quiet down and stare at you until you go away. Now I gotta ask, what the hell is the difference between mercenaries and adventurers? This man's clothes tell two stories. They are high quality, made of silk and velvet, but they're also torn and dirty, as if their wearer has had a hard time of it. His shirt is also stained with some of the wine he's been drinking. He motions for you to sit and pours you some wine. Greetings, fellow victims. I'm Bearden. Why are you sitting here getting drunk? No job, not anymore. I'm a victim, sure as I'm sitting here. He gulps down more wine. What are you a victim of? Well, I'd be glad to tell you all about it. He starts to fall over and then writes himself. I was running a lumber mill in the ruins of what was fall, but then it was destroyed. Tell me about your mill. Beautiful place. The surf sawed and processed 30 lo big logs a day. It was going to make me rich, but then it got destroyed. I fled, of course, and I can't take the risk of going back for what I left behind. You left something behind. Perhaps I can help with pay. Bearden tried to focus his soggy brain for a moment. He realizes that you were an adventurer. Oh. Yes! There are some papers I left in my home. Bills of sale, receipts, contracts. Things that mean people owe me money. 
They're worthless to anyone else, but to me, they're what I can help me get back on my feet. Bring them to me, and I'll pay. Where is Fal? Fal is, or was, in the woods to the, um, the northeast of here. He thinks, confused. Oh, that's right, the northeast. But then a hill rider, or whatever they're called, raid burnt it to the ground. The only thing I was able to save was my horses. Oh, you want some? You can purchase a set for only 400 coins. Yes, please, I'll buy some horses. He takes your gold and, with some difficulty, counts it. Great! The horses are in the stables. Some of them will go with you now. He orders wine in celebration of good fortune. Uh, something about the mill? That lumber mill was my way to richness. Lord Volp said so when he invited me here. We were going to turn this island into a paradise. Now I'm stuck out in the cold and Lord Volp doesn't do anything to help. Who is this Lord Volp? He starts to get woozy. Volp is the lord who brought us here. We run it all. He's making this island great. He's... He's... With a loud, satisfying thunk, Bearden's head hits the table. He snores. Good wine. Good stuff. Ooh. Why do you think I'm a victim? You're here. Everyone here is a victim. The moment you get tied up with the Empire of the Hill Raiders, that's it. Okay, then. Behind the counter, you see Purdy, the elegant and pert owner of Purdy's Resort. She bows to you as you approach and wipes clean the counters in front of where you sit. I am Purdy, and I run Purdy's Resort, the loveliest inn in all of Valorum. Well, this does seem like a nice inn. Well, when the captains want a good place to stay, they come here. The sailors, well, they go somewhere else. A fine private room, only 15 coins. We have good solid meals for sale. And, of course, bottles of Mara wa Isle's finest wines, only 12 coins. Do you get many captains? Salafni is Mara Isle's main port. We get a lot of sailors here, and they're captains. The sailors go to other, lesser places. The captains come here. Ooh, you sell apple pie here. I like the idea. Everything here is... Actually, the meat on the spit would have been a better choice, now that I look at it. Alright, and... <coughs> is this the only inn in town? Oh no, there's also the sea worm inn. It is a... Uh, uh... Well, my mother taught me if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Fair enough. There's various food in here. Mushrooms, greens, and steak. And some bread over there, but we've already got plenty of food. And this must be the rooms. Let's see if there's anything of value in here. And I don't need to take the earrings, they're not that valuable. Nothing in there of value. Ooh, now that's a nice room. And here is just storage. Some wines, plates, and some fine meal. Which is actually quite valuable. Sure, we're gonna sell that meal. Why would we not? I'm gonna go run over and sell it right now. Right to you. It's only 40 coins we're getting out of it, but at least it's something. Um, and let's go get on our horses. It'll probably make travel a lot better. Not those horses, not those horses. There we go! And now we have horses! Yay! And here... Well, first, actually, I think we did get a few level ups. Sheik leveled up. Point of dexterity, which does improve tool use, and our quick strikes improved. When did he get a point in quick strike? Did I buy it? Yeah, no matter. Bonnie leveled up as well, but I want to get more points in free skills. Actually, how much... Six is what I'm... Sixteen is what I'm going to need. No, I think it's... Seventeen is what I'm going to need for the best spells for both of them. So I'm going to need to save up a lot in order to improve free skills more to get that higher. So, Bonnie is not going to level up. I'm going to work on saving up for that. Draco leveled up. Doesn't he have... He does have it. Okay. Mage spells improve again, because I want that improved. Actually, you know what? 
I guess you could use some dexterity. So improve that a bit just so you have that improved. And then we'll start saving up for mage spell as improvements. Alright. And that is going to be the end of this episode. A lot of talking and the like, a lot of interruptions frustratingly enough. Next episode, we'll head out and start making our way towards where we need to go. Willow, I believe, is where we're planning to go, isn't it? Uh, yep. Under the village of Willow. And we were told that there's something to the northeast for some guy's quest. It's probably what this is, but... Oh, no! There! That's where we'd be going for him, but... I suppose our start will be to go to Willow, and then probably to Liam. But that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Tristan44, that is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.